Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this new bonus lesson for volume 4. The first thing uh, I will show you in this uh, bonus lesson is how to create a simple rollover effect. And uh, you can see that uh, for that purpose I created uh, two materials. They just have a image loaded in color channel, so nothing fancy. Now let me just doodle quickly what I'm trying to achieve here. So I'll create a simple plane like this and uh, I will texture both sides. So one of these guys will be in front and of course one of these guys will be at the back. So that will be the first thing we will do for our setup. And uh, the effect I'm going for is uh, that we have some sort of a control when we actually pull a little gizmo from here to here that this plane would break up in pieces and simply rotate to show the image on the back side. So simple roll over effect. Let me get rid of this little guy and uh, we'll start by creating a plane and uh, actually I can enter some values here. So let's go with 300 with 200. So a little bit wider than uh, higher. So let's actually rotate this guy and uh, let's pull it upwards somewhere around here. So I will use this opportunity to use poly FX object because I want to show you how this can work on a simple polygon object. So I can really convert this, but you can do the same thing with cloner okay so everything we will do here with poly fx is completely transferable to other mograph generators so let's load that poly fx in our scene and if you remember correctly poly fx has to be made a child of polygon objects so let's hold shift key and uh, hit this poly fx that will make it a child object i'll just hit nb which is the same as this uh, guard shading lines so I can actually see the polygons because I believe it would be much easier to see what is going on. So let's uh, before we tackle this poly fix guy let's simply texture our object properly and uh, I'll load both materials but uh, we'll simply say for this guy to be on front and for this second guy to be on back. Now you can clearly see we have uh, front and back textured properly. Now this poly fix guy by itself it doesn't do anything at least nothing that is currently visible but all it is doing it's breaking these polygons into faces into components. So we have an effector step so any effector from here will work exactly the same as it works with the cloner or matrix or fracture object. So let's load the plane effector and uh, currently you can see it simply did what it's supposed to do. So it moved all these guys 100 centimeters in Y. So what if I want to uncheck this position and use rotation values? Let's see what happens. So you can see it is rotating per polygon basis. That is what this poly fx does. It simply breaks up the polygons and considers, well, relatively speaking, it considers all polygons to be clones so you can simply apply all effectors just as you would on MoGraph cloner or matrix object. Now, as you probably remember, effectors have an follow option. So if I change this to linear, I can affect this setup in a linear manner. I really hope you remember some things from the training. And uh, as I said before, if I want to have the effect from left to right, then I have to obey this axis. This axis is the X axis and we are going into positive direction because uh, 
where the arrow points it is positive direction and opposite is the negative direction i'm pretty sure you already know that so now the effect will become apparent only when i pull this guy here and there is a small change i really think you should be able to see that and what is changing is this rotation so let's try 90 here and you will see this change to be more prominent so I can simply control the rotation of these guys and the corresponding image will show so if I want the back image to show I simply have to use double the value here so let's enter here times 2 and you see we have the other image showing up but with a slight uh, problem which we will solve right away and uh, obviously for the ones that haven't noticed this image is uh, oriented wrongly because it really doesn't look like that in real world and uh, I can demonstrate that so it should look like this now there is really fast solution to this and you simply have to select this guy here select the plane object and uh, you'll notice that if you enter the texture mode you really cannot uh, do much in terms of rotating the texture because currently the mapping set here is UVW and uh, it's pretty much as it is and you cannot modify it outside the body paint now what I will do I will simply change the projection let's try cubic and uh, I will just temporarily turn off this uh, texture mode and turn off tiling and I will right click here and do a fit to object command it will ask me if I want the sub objects to be included no because this polyfix doesn't have anything to do with this so no and uh, if nothing changed we still have the same effect so nothing will change here but you will see that now I have the ability to rotate this texture via this texture axis mode so if i simply rotate this guy by 180 i will get the effect that i need so let's give it a shot now i can even enable this grout shading and uh, give it a shot so how about that simple as that now of course you can expand this setup maybe load the uh, let's say a delay effector would be really nice here and uh, in spring mode and uh, let me just emphasize the strength a little bit so let's try 75 and the effect will be very pronounced so make sure that this delay happens after the plane vector we talked about this uh, priorities in MoGraph so if you want to see anything in terms of delay you have to play the time otherwise uh, you won't see the effects it's simply impossible for you to see so let's see it play and uh, so I'll pull this guy so you can see the effect so this is really nice actually let's stop this and maybe increase this to let's say thousand so we have uh, enough time and uh, play once again it really doesn't matter where this guy is positioned in uh, y or z it simply takes only the x axis into account so here is a nice effect so something like a rollover with a springy delay you can also do this uh, with cloner and uh, fracture and matrix object okay really nice and simple effect and uh, i really wanted to show you this on a simple example so you can understand the concept and you can then easily apply it to other generators let me now show you something a little bit more elaborate in this lesson we will solve one problem that uh, many users have trouble with and that is how to create a really fast efficient dynamic and uh, responsive chain because uh, in many setups we can see some sort of physical simulations and uh, attempts with 
spline dynamics, but actually I think Mogra gives the best solution in terms of quality and speed because you can have, uh, let's say, a thousand dynamic links in the chain and the system will still be really, really responsive. So let me show you how to build a Mogra chain. This setup uh, is not so advanced, but it really demands uh, a little bit of concentration. So you can see that I already here have two links and uh, that they are oriented just as they should be in a real chain. So you can clearly see that and uh, I will undo this. And uh, with Mogra, the cloner is almost always an answer to a solution where you have to have a lot of objects which uh, have to interact on some level. So I will create a cloner. I will drop both of these guys in here. Now you can see it uh, really cloned these guys three times according to these settings. And uh, first thing that I want to do, I want to establish the length of the chain. So how many links? So in this case, let's uh, be conservative and let's say 50. Now do have in mind that 50 links in any dynamic simulation inside Cine 4D is uh, really, really heavy calculation. So when I say conservative, I mean conservative for the cloner. Now let's actually lower this number and uh, bring links together and uh, say something around 10. And uh, to orient them properly, I would use a target effector because that effector also offers me to say to each consecutive clone to look at the next one. So consider all these clones as nodes. So if I say next node here, now you may think that nothing happened, but it actually did. But the problem is this cloner has this fix clone enabled. So if you uncheck that, watch what happens. So now the power of target effector comes to play. So if you disable it, watch what happens. And if you enable it, it simply tells next node to orient itself properly. You also have previous node. You see it kind of gives uh, different results. Now, it's often a good idea to tell this uh, target effector where your up vector is. So, what is your up direction, relatively speaking? And uh, clearly, that is y plus. So, set it to y plus because uh, otherwise you could get some problems with uh, link flipping and uh, stuff like that. So, let's get back to our cloner. Now, since this cloner is a root of my object, and I will use it to move the chain, I think it's much better idea to go here in negative direction. That will push this uh, chain downward. So you can see we have a slight intersection here and uh, we'll simply search for the right value here. So let's say minus eight. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough. You can be really picky and uh, do a decimal value here to cover this small gap, but uh, I think that is an overkill in this case. So what now? Now we have 50 links, they are oriented properly, but uh, we want a dynamic chain we can move, which will swing and uh, do what it is uh, supposed to do. Now here comes the knowledge from rigging. And if you watched volume three, will have no problems in following this. So first thing that I want to do, I want to create a trace because uh, I want to create a joint chain exactly on the positions of uh, these guys. I can do this manually, but uh, this will be really, really time consuming. So instead, it's much better to use a tracer object. So it will trace the cloner. Now, if I set this to connect all objects, I will get a spline here. Okay, so I have to hit play to refresh. So 
That is uh, also a refresh problem. So if we put this guy under the cloner, then we won't have that refresh problem because it has to trace this information from the cloner. Now, if we simply convert this tracer with C, I will get a spline and that spline, let me just show you that. I hope you will be able to see that that spline will have a point exactly on the location of axis of each link okay i think you can understand that so we can use this spline to create our joint chain so we will go to our model mode and here under character menu we will do a spline to joints command so this command creates a joint chain here it is simply control clicked on this guy and it unfolded all and neat thing it did for us it simply created a hierarchy of all these joints so we don't have to do this manually and we avoided the trouble of creating all this by hand now one neat thing in uh, release 14 is uh, is this uh, naming tool and uh, what i want to do with this naming tool is uh, I want to replace all these joints so I will replace the name joint with I'll put a dollar sign here and will type n so n will stand for number and this uh, dollar sign will simply tell number them in consecutive manner as you progress through here so if I click replace name it will number them from 0 to 49. So we have 50 joints exactly as 50 links here. So I can do folding for all. Now let me get rid of this uh, spline. We don't need it anymore. And uh, here with this joint chain, I can change the visual appeal. So I will put this to be a line and. Uh, for this size of these guys, let's go to maybe, let's say two. And uh, since we have additional options to set color, I will set a color here for those guys. And uh, here under display, we can also go with uh, maybe circle. So it is much more vivid and uh, we can hide this effect or display in the viewport. Now, these guys, if you remember correctly from our rigging course are not oriented correctly so z axis has to point down so let's unfold all select the first one and uh, simply run a joint align tool so with default settings let's hit align and uh, as you can see all these guys have aligned properly that was the easy part. Let me just uh, hide this cloner so we have only this joint chain. So this is actually the joint chain. Now, I hope you know that when you add a IK tag to your joint chain, and uh, here you have to put the end of the chain. So in this case, there is this uh, joint number 49. And uh, I will not create a goal for this object because the only thing I need from here is this dynamics. Okay, so I will enable this and uh, let's fold this all so it's nice and neat. And uh, now here under this uh, IK tag, because dynamics are enabled, if I will simply select this first joint and move this, hope you will see this in action. You see I have some movement happening so I can even press play so this is uh, not really natural as you would expect it so let's uh, change some settings here let's maybe go with the uh, higher drag value so let's try something around uh, 20 or so and uh, becoming a little bit better let me stop this for a moment let's go here even step further let's try something like uh, 30 or so and uh, 
this is better. I can even go back with this and uh, maybe even more. Let's try 40. Looks better. But uh, I could even go higher left chain, maybe even 60. Let's try how this works. And uh, this is much more natural. And just increase this uh, rotation hold just a bit. So it's a little bit more stiff and leggy. Let's go even uh, maybe 40. See how that works. And uh, I think this is really good. And see how responsive and fast this setup is in the viewport. So I will reset the position like this. Hit play and the chain will settle. Now, here is the tricky part. We want to transfer this behavior of these guys to these clones here. So how will we do that? We will do that with another cloner. So let's create a cloner and uh, I will subordinate this complete joint chain to this cloner. So the reason for it is uh, I want to use the tracer object to trace these joints as clones. So let me first uh, enter zero here because we just need one chain and I will uncheck this fix clone. Then this guy will point downward. Now we can be picky here and under transform tab set the color of the cloner to the exactly same color we set for this joints because the cloner overrides things. Now what I wanted to show you here is uh, let me just hide this guys and uh, I will load a tracer while my cloner is selected so the tracer will trace the cloner but uh, in order to avoid any problems with refreshing and priorities I will simply put this tracer after the cloner because uh, it has to know what to trace and things as I mentioned earlier in the training are executed from top to bottom so this guy will have problems tracing something that is after him so it has to happen before him okay I hope that makes sense and uh, if we set these settings here correctly we will see a spline so the spline will appear the spline that will trace all these guys in here so since we will not trace vertices we can turn this off we will connect all objects because we want to connect all the objects under this cloner with the spline so we want to trace it and here we will have to use immediate clones mode so watch how this spline appears and uh, just to demonstrate that this guy is uh, tracing correctly let me hit play and move this cloner so you can see this spline is uh, really inheriting the dynamics from this joint so this is really nice solution so how about that that is really cool let me stop this reset the position and uh, hit play once again to settle things down and now since we have a cloner that contains our links why wouldn't we simply clone these guys onto another object and uh, you can clone on tracer as you remember from the training because internally tracer is just a spline simply treat it as a spline object so here we will change the mode to object and we will simply drop the tracer here of course we will set the count to exactly the same amount of joints so 50 and uh, the trouble we are facing here is uh, actually in this cloner because it has count set to free and that is messing up this tracer and at the end it's messing up this cloner which clones onto this tracer so if we put here one so just a single chain here is what we have now as a result if you simply forget everything we did and i really hope i haven't lost 
anyone during this uh, lesson. So if you simply disregard that and uh, press play, you use this guy here, you'll simply get a chain. So look how fast and responsive it is. And once you will play around with these dynamics, you'll get naturally a different results you can also make this chain collide with colliders set here so this is really great there is also a much more advanced setup where you can actually create a automatic link generation but uh, that is really far beyond the scope of this tutorial even though i have such setup and uh, i think this is much better idea so determine the amount of links at the beginning and work from there so this is really fast real time with collisions with proper deformations and uh, dynamics so really hope you enjoyed this one and uh, that you will not have any problems with doing uh, realistic chains in cw4d that's it see you in the next bonus lesson volume training or project series